Okay, so I brought my images into Lightroom here. And what I want to do now is I want to uh, select the ones that I, I want. So as we look here, you can see that I've already have them selected actually. Uh, I got them all blue colored here and five stars. Uh, this is my base one that I shot with the lights on. And you see that it's not a, a really good lighting of the product. It's more of a, a documentation of it, I guess. Uh, start to get over into these. We have some nice lighting coming across here. Good side light there. We have another side light on the other side, about a 45. Uh, this one I also like. This one is a straight on shot right up here, lighting up the label and part of the whiskey bottle. Uh, this is another good left side. I might use this one as opposed to that one, I'm not sure, or I might use a combination of both of them. And, and that is really the beauty of Photoshop is that we can use a combination of the, the same, you know, two lights from the same side. If we like a certain part of one, a certain part of the other. Like I might like the way the light is on the label of this one and the way that the light is on the cap of the other one. So I could always go back and forth, go back and forth between those. Um, then I have this background one here, which I sort of like the way that that liquid looks there. And this one here, which I might use this liquid too. So I'm not sure which one of those two I'd want to use first, or if I use a combination of both of them. So again, I can select one, I hold down my control key and click on all the other ones that I want to select. And then once I do that, I hit my right key on my mouse and go down to edit in. And I wanna go down to open up as layers in Photoshop. So I've already done that. Uh, what would happen is Photoshop would open up and it would start importing all of these layers into Photoshop. Now this is again, my base image here and we have uh, one of the side images that has uh, kind of high specular highlights on it. And I'm not so sure I'd use that one. So I like the way that this one to the right looks, the right side or left side of the bottle. I like the center one. And I like this side of the bottle here. And I do like the way that the liquid looks here in this bottle and here too. So it depends on if I'm going for a brighter uh, exposure on the bottle inside or not. So I, it, and I'm not sure which two of these I'm gonna use yet till I get it all together. So we'll come back here. Um, I think, I guess between that one, oh yeah, here's my other one. I want to see, I have two of them that are on the right side and I want to see which one I want to use. And I think I like the second one better. I think I'm going to leave that one off. Cause I think that second one and this one, I, th I think these two will go together really well as far as lighting up combined. So I think I will leave these two off for right now and this off. Now, the other thing you need to do is you need to make a nice, um, mask for this and we need to make a nice selection so the selection is going to be really important as to how this looks now there's many different ways you can do that um, you could actually use let's see you could use this this bottle right here because it has a nice edge to it and use the um, quick selection tool and just sort of go down in it and try to make a selection there i'm not sure how well this will work here let's see It's along the edges there. I'm holding down the alt now to make it a minus so I can get rid of it across the top there. But anyway, you get the idea. You can bring the selection tool on down and make sure that when you do select it out, you select this bottom part out here. Uh, that is a reflection on the table here. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that selection. The other way that you can do that is you can do the polygonal lasso tool. And uh, you can sort of just Go along here and every time you click the button it starts to make the edge and you can make a longer edge here and just make shorter clicks in between here and if you make a uh, mistake you press the delete key to go back one and just make short little clicks here to follow along so you can do that and just to go all the way around it again 
I'm going to get out of that. And I actually have made up a mask already here. So let me bring all of these back that I'm going to use here. I already made a mask here on this one and I will just activate it again. And here's my mask with the, uh, just showing a black background right now with, with these other ones here. So this is masking out this bottle right here. And you can see that's a pretty good cutout along the edges here. Now, again, this is my base bottle that I'm not really, I don't know that I'm gonna use it unless I decide to use the label underneath. I might use the labels underneath as my base, but other than that, I'm not so sure I'd use the rest of this bottle. So I'd have to make another mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this one down to the bottom here and just set it on the bottom of all of my um, ones that I selected. Now, I'm gonna keep these two in there, even though they're off, I'm gonna keep them just in case I change my mind. But what I want to do is I want to select this one and I'm going to hold down shift and select the top one. And I want to put them all into a folder. And this group folder right here, the nice thing about this is I can take this mask here, hold down my alt key and drag it up to the folder and let go of it on the folder. And it's going to create a mask for all of these. So it's going to mask everything that's on the inside of it. Now, as long as everything has been taken at the same time and hasn't moved, we're going to be okay. And that's what I did here is I, I had the bottle on a table that didn't move and I had my camera so it didn't move. So everything should work out pretty good on this. So these are uh, my bottles here. And what I want to do is I want to, I want all of the lighted parts of all the of these three to show through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this one and I'll hold down my shift key and highlight the other one that we can see. And I'm going to change them all to lighten. And when I do that, you see that all of that lighting shows through. Now I got to get rid of this bottom one here. I got to turn this one off so that you don't see that one showing through on this bottle here. And we can see that this looks pretty good. Uh, so far I can turn this, this off here and this is lighting up the inside of the bottle. And you can see that it, it showing us the liquid there, which that looks pretty good. The liquid is quite dark down there. So I may end up using this one here. And I'm going to drag this on up into my group and turn that on. And you see the liquid looks kind of light down there. So what I want to do actually is I want to focus just on this particular layer. And I'm going to do that by holding down the alt and click on the eyeball. So only that layer is lit up. And I only want to bring in this part down here. That's, that's all I want to bring in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square mask here of it just like that, uh, just so that I have that much of it. And you know, I, I have that little lump there. I don't know if that'd make a difference. So I'm gonna try it this way. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a mask there, just on that part right there. And so when I bring everything back here, you see that only that part is lit up down underneath there. So it's it, what I have to do is even though this is way too bright, uh, this one has nothing, but this one is way too bright. So what I wanna do is I wanna select this layer and I'm gonna bring the opacity down on that layer, which is only my bottom section there. And you can see that I can bring this down to where I don't need a lot showing through, I just need some showing through. So uh, I can bring my um, opacity for this layer down so that it blends in with that black of the other layer above it and still shows through some light. So it gives it some depth there. Now. The only problem here is that this is starting to, um, and I'll bring it down just a little bit more, see if we match, a little bit different color than that one up there. So what I want to do is I want to add an adjustment layer onto that very bottom one only so that I can make it match uh, the upper liquid in the in this particular one here, in this, in this layer here. I want to make that liquid match. So on this one here, I'm going to add a hue and saturation layer to it and I'm going to clip that layer to it which means it's only going to affect that layer right there and I'm going to adjust this over and you can see that right away it's already and let me just turn that on and off for you so you can see that you see it here it's it's rather green and by adjusting it now I've made it more of that brownish tone that I have on the upper one there so now that looks more like it it um, matches that let me go a little bit darker here I don't want to go too dark and that looks good. And I'm, I'm clicking back on my bottle layer again and I'm gonna adjust the opacity down a little bit more on it. Maybe not that much. Bring up some here. 
It seems to be a fine line and I can't quite adjust. There we are. Yes, that looks better. So now what I do is, is I made, I got the two different bottle layers. The one, you know, with the light showing through and one's shining through rather brightly and the other one is not quite as bright. So the one that's not quite as bright is my upper layer here. And that's the one that controls this top part of the liquid here. My bottom layer here is this one here. And you can see that we have the mask right there. Um, you can see that the mask is right there on it. And so that's the bottom layer there. And this one wasn't quite matching the same color because it was so bright. The light coming through was so bright. So it changed the hue of that color. So we just used our hue saturation layer to bring that color back onto the bottom layer there. So now the bottom layer is represented by this part right here on the inside of the lit up part of the bottle. And this part of the bottle is representing this upper layer on the inside of the bottle. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I have my um, label here and I like the way that this label looks and I actually like the way that this top part looks here too. I don't know, let me just bring this all back in the frame so that we can see that. So the bottle looks quite nice. Now what I'm gonna do is at the bottom here is I'm gonna go ahead and add a color layer. I'm gonna add a solid color layer and I'm gonna make it black and that's okay. And I just wanted to uh, outline this bottle so that we can see what we have going on along this bottle right here. Now, because of one of these layers here, and I, let me see if I can find exactly which one it is. This layer right here, we have a rather bright edge along it. And so uh, this one too, I mean, when I click on this one, when I click on this bottom layer, you can see that that Right, it, and that's mainly because the light is shining through the bottle so it's it's affecting that edge there so all I want to do on these really is uh, if I take this this mask right here and I change to a brush and I want a soft brush here I want to make sure I have a soft brush and I want the brush to be down a little bit smaller and all I'm using is I'm using my bracket keys on the right next to the P on the key, keyboard uh, to the left one makes it smaller, the right one makes it larger. So I'm just gonna paint right in this area right here and mask off this part of the bright area from this particular one. Now you can see my light still shows through there and um, you can see that when we turn off the background, we still have a nice cut edge there. We just don't have that bright light showing through on the sides. Now, the same thing happens with this particular one here and again, that's because, let me just show you that layer by itself. That's because this, this particular one that lights through has a bright edge around there. And so that creates that little highlight around the edge of the glass. And what that is, is if you remember when we had our image, and let me just uh, go back to that particular layer here. If you remember when we had that image by itself, it had a very bright background and that light is wrapping around the bottle. So it's, it's creating this edge light along the bottle that we see when we click on all of the um, images. So all we wanna do is we just wanna get rid of some of that edge light in there. I don't know that we want all of that in there. Um, and I don't know that I wanna get rid of all of it. And that all depends on how our background looks uh, that we put in. So in order to make that judgment call, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add uh, my background to it. Now I have a black there and I want it to fade off into black. Um, but I do, you know, so that we can put some verbiage there or whatever, whatever you want for the ad. But I want to create a gradient coming out from behind the bottle. So it looks like I had a light on the background. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate this color fill. So Command J and that's going to duplicate this color fill. I'm going to click on the color itself and what I want to do is if I bring this here, I can click on any part of this bottle here. And it's, it says up here, sample all layers. You want to make sure it says that. And I want to click on that brown color. And you see that that brown color comes up. And I like that color because it's going to match the label. Now notice that it goes over everything. And that's okay because all of our modes above it are enlightened. So because this color is a little bit lighter, it's going to show through everything. But we're not going to worry about that right at the moment. So I'm going to press OK. And now I want to make a round gradient on this background right here. Oops, excuse me on that. 
on this color fill background right here. So I'm gonna go to my gradient tool onto the side here, make sure I'm on a gradient tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's on a round gradient. And it's gonna go from black to white here. And what I wanna do is I wanna click on the mask of that color fill. And I'm gonna go to the center of the bottle, and I'm just gonna drag out like this. And you see that it's gonna make this gradient coming out from the bottle. Now I'm gonna go a little bit further out, I think. Uh, let's see. Maybe like that. I think right around there. Now right now the gradient is inverted. So all we have to do is click on the mask and put command I, and that's gonna invert that gradient back. Now you notice that the gradient fades out into the black, which is what I want. I want it to look like it's behind the bottle. Notice also that it's also reflecting in the bottle, or the gradient is showing through the bottle, I should say, not reflecting in, but showing through it. So I want to eliminate that. Now, the easiest way to do that is I can go back up here to this group layer here, and we have our mask already defined here. And if I hold down Command and click on that layer mask, I create a selection all around my bottle again. Again, we're using the same selection that we had from the beginning, so we don't have to redo it every time. So now I have that selection, I can go to my brush tool and I can make sure that's on black and I can make sure that I am on my gradient or my color fill gradient mask. And I want to make my brush a little bit bigger. So again, I'm gonna hold down my bracket keys to make it bigger. And all I'm gonna do is just wipe black through the bottle and make sure that I get it through there nice and tight. And you notice that on the, on the mask here, uh, when I click on the mask here, you see that we've made, we've painted in that mask right there. We painted in inside that selection because that's all it's going to let us do. And that's going to prevent that light or that uh, color from showing through our bottle. So let's just go back to that. I'm going to get back off that mask. And I'm going to deselect my selection there. And now we can see that we have that gradient has gone away from our bottle there. And so the bottle now, all of the lighting in the bottle shows through. And this looks good. Now, the only problem is that the light on the edge is not what I want on this particular one. It doesn't, doesn't look convincing enough. So to remedy that, okay, so right now the picture looks pretty good. I like the way it looks. The only issue I have is this bright light that's around the edges here. And we can see that here. And that is caused by this, uh, oops, not that one, uh, this one here this bright screen here. So when we just isolate that one, we can see that, um, and let me just get rid of the, again, that light is wrapping around the bottle from the background because we've got a bright background there. So put that mask back on and we'll come back to this guy right here. So when we get rid of it, the only problem when we get rid of it is that the bottle up here looks flat. Now this one still has transparency through it at the bottom here. So the bottom of the bottle here looks really good, the light coming through, and that's because of this layer right here. Um, but once you click it off, we lose the depth to that bottle. The same thing happens with this layer. We lose the depth because we can't, this sort of gives it a round shape by being able to see the light coming through the bottle. It gives a definition of the curve. So we definitely want to keep that. So all we want to do is we want to click on this layer here, which is, which is that layer uh, with the light around the edge and the inside light and we're going to add a mask to it. Now this time I'm going to hold down Alt or Option as I click on the mask and the mask is going to come in black and you see that it completely got rid of that edge there. But what I want to do is I want to go to my brush tool and make sure that I have a soft edge brush here, which I do. And I want my color to be on white. So I'm going to switch that. Oops, didn't mean to do that, sorry. On white. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint on the inside here. And see as I paint towards the edge there, it gives it that look. It gives it that three-dimensional look. Now I wanna make sure I get it all the way up there. Now I do have the light around the edge, right along the edge here. And what I'm gonna do for that is I'm just gonna switch my brush. I'm gonna switch it to black. And I'm gonna paint around that edge there. And just sort of give it a little bit of a darkened edge. But it's still gonna give me enough definition there uh, around the bottle. Now I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller again, change the color and work on the inside um, to try and get it close to the edge. Now the nice thing about using a mask is that if you goof up, uh, you just switch the color and you just paint back over. Now the only problem with a smaller 
edge is that um, you don't get that nice gradient that you get when you use a larger edge, which I like that right there. Let's see, I'm gonna get rid of this edge. There, now you can see that our bottle has nice definition, it looks round, it has that light showing through and um, everything looks good. This, this looks like it belongs there now. Okay, so the last thing I want to deal with are the specular highlights that are on top of the bottle where the bottle curves at the very top and that's this area right here. Uh, that's this area right in here. And so we have uh, these specular highlights here. Now, they are caused by these different layers. You see when I turn off that layer, that's these two lights here. And when I turn off this layer, that's those other lights on the other side here. That's these two lights and this light down here. So again, there's a couple different ways that we, we can get rid of that. Uh, one of the ways that we can get rid of it is we just put a mask on the layer, uh, which I can do right here. I can, I can put a mask on this layer here. And the offending part is right there. I go to my brush tool. I go ahead and put, um, make sure that black is my top color and I can paint that away. And as you can see, that works very well. But the only issue is like when I come over to this one and let me go ahead and put a mask on that one. You can see that that one is the light that's right next to it. Now, if I start painting this out and I get a little bit too far over and these two cross, I'll start to get a lighter area in there. Now, this, you know, is working. So I can absolutely just paint on these masks and get rid of those offending areas out of the bottle. So when you, when you look at the individual layers again, you see that there's information gone because we placed that mask right in the center here. And um, so you can see that mask is getting rid of all that information right there. The other way of doing this, and let me just get rid of this mask right here. I'm just gonna throw that away on this layer. The other way of getting rid of this is actually to go to that layer, which I'm just gonna hold down my alt and click on an eyeball so that layer shows up. And I can go to my patch tool and I could just take my patch tool and just move that on out of there. And go around that part right there. And let's see, we got one more offending area right there. Okay, so now with my patch tool there, I've gotten rid of that information that is there, but I've also kept the pixels intact in case they are needed to show through the image. And I've got rid of that light right there. Now, again, this one here, um, the light, let me just get rid of that mask. You can see that the light is showing through right there. And we can get rid of that in two ways. We can make a mask or we can use uh, the patch tool. I like the patch tool because I like keeping the pixels there in case they're needed. Like if I make an image or blow this up, uh, let's say this bottom layer, which is actually this layer showing through here, uh, for some reason isn't quite 100% opacity, like I adjusted it down back and forth, uh, then I lose those layers that are built up that block out the background. So again, I'm gonna take, um, let me just bring that back. I'm gonna take this mask off, get rid of that mask on that layer. Let me get rid of that right there. And I'm gonna stick with that layer. I'm, I'm just gonna isolate it by itself so I can look at it. You don't, you don't have to do this. You can actually just select this layer if you know what the offending part is and uh, take your patch tool and you can just sort of go right around it and just move it on out of there. And oops, get rid of it here. Got a little zealous in my patch tool there. And so we got rid of all of those specular highlights that are on top now with the patch tool. Now we do have one more right down here, which I think I'm gonna get rid of also. And I believe that's on this layer. Yes, it is. So I'm gonna come down that layer again, using my patch tool, just right around it. And just get rid of that right there. And now my bottle is looking really good. I have a finished product here now. Um, you can mess with it a little bit more if you want. Um, I'll show you a quick something quick. I think. The way it is now is just right. I have the, the right amount of light on each side. This side is a little bit brighter than this side. Um, so if I wanted to, I could take that side, which is uh, this light right here. And I can take this light and I can reduce the opacity down. And so just by a little bit too much there, I think more like 81. Yeah, 
maybe a little bit less, bring down tiny, but there we go. Uh, so the opacity is down, so now the both sides, the lighting matches, which is really difficult to do in the studio. Um, you know, you can bring the light in and out and adjust it, but it takes a while to set all that up. It's much easier in Photoshop just to adjust the opacity up and down for that. And again, that's the reason why I like to use the patch tool as opposed to uh, a mask on each individual layer, because if I lose that information, I start uh, making one layer um, so it's, the opacity is not at 100%. The other layer when it shows through is there's nothing there and it starts to get transparent and we don't want that. So right now my bottle looks really good. I got my background there. So maybe the last thing you want to do is crop it. Uh, let's, say, let's say we're going to use this as a page ad and we want to put and this that we want towards the center of the page and this the outside and we're going to put some verbiage over here. So we may, may want to crop this a little bit. So I'm going to come down from the top here, come up here and move the top down a little bit and maybe come over to the side here like that. Now, the main thing when you're cropping too is to remember to always get rid of this delete crop pixels here, get rid of that. Because what happens is that if you crop it, you get rid of those pixels, it does make the image smaller and makes it, you know, so it's not quite as big, but you also lose that information. So if you ever want to bring those back, let's say they wanted this image to be on the other side of the page, uh, you know, you finally got it cropped. You said, here's the crop, here's the cropped image and you, send it on over to the client and it's going to take a minute to work and you send it over to the client and the client says well that's great except we want the bottle to be on the other side well if you crop the pixels you would have to go back in and add pixels to it now because i didn't crop the pixels here if i click on my crop tool again uh, you can see that i can just bring this back out over to the image and bring the other side in and so now I can go back and refine this image if needed to be after the fact. So there's our finished image. Uh, I hope this has helped and hopefully you've learned a couple of things on the tools to use for in Photoshop. But uh, you can see that when we shoot a product with a single light and a number of layers and then bring them into Photoshop, we have a lot of flexibility after the fact to do work in post. We can change the background to whatever color we want. Uh, we can do we can do anything that we want with this image now because it's all cut out, set to go, and just come in and change different layers. So if you like this video, please give it a like. Um, definitely subscribe. I have all kinds for you. I appreciate you watching, and take care.